for people who watch my videos, they know I kind of have some of a structure to what I'm saying. I have a point I like to get to, and I try to wrap it up under five minutes. This is not going to be one of those videos. I'm going to sit here and just kind of discuss for as long as it takes what I think the Horns need to do to get in a national title, how college football is set up, and my beefs with the BCS, as I said before. And some of those beefs I have help out the Longhorns, and I'll get into some of those as well. Because me personally, to start off what I'm going to say, uh, your fan base, your history, and just who people think you could beat should not factor into the BCS. And some of those help Texas. So let, let's see what happened. First, let's go over what happened last weekend on Saturday. Great college football weekend. Texas beats Baylor like we're supposed to. OU destroys A&M like they're supposed to. Iowa pulls the upset on Penn State. Now, I was talking to people about that. I said, I think Iowa can do this. Not because, I think it mostly just I was, I was wishful thinking because I didn't know about in Iowa. And they did. They knocked Penn State and they are out of the way which clears a path for Texas and all the other one-loss teams. Because Penn State's out of it. You lose to Iowa, you're done. Especially when you've been jumped by teams after you keep winning. Once you lose, you're out of it. You know that the PCS pollsters don't like you, the computers don't like you, so you're gone. Texas Tech, on the other hand, plays Oklahoma State in Lubbock and dismantles them. And i got to say big ups to the Tech Red Raiders because I thought it would be a better game. I thought that Okie State could pull the upset. And I still say Okie State's a really good team, which is just testament to Texas Tech, um, who just just throttled them. And it doesn't help Texas much because we beat Oklahoma State by four at home. They won 56-20 to 20, uh, in Lubbock. So maybe that's just a high from last week. But me personally, I'm not going to call Tech a system team anymore right now. That's a legitimate team. Number two team in the squad, well-deserved. I, well, right now, I think they should be number one, but... Uh, you know, Alabama's got that spot right now. Speaking of Alabama, playing a sorry LSU team. And I was pulling hard for LSU to, to knock off Bama to give us a little more leeway. But uh, in the end, LSU ended up winning that, I mean, ended up losing that game in overtime because Jarrett Lee is straight trash. Um, so, but the thing is, I'm not too down about that. And also, because I, I keep thinking about Florida, because Florida is on our back, on our backside, ready to jump us. And they have more, I guess, quality opponents left, or they're playing the best football, people say. Um, but and I keep worrying about Florida, but at the back of my mind, I'm like, you know what? It doesn't matter. Because at the end of the year, the winner of the SEC is going to the national championship, and the winner of the Big 12 South, if that, if that team wins the Big 12, is going to the national championship. So, really, I don't need to worry about Florida and those teams. Though I will say, Florida's playing great. But you've got to look at the losses, and they've lost to Ole Miss, a sorry team. Now, they're all right, but they're unranked. And so to the computers, Ole Miss is a sorry team, and you lose in the swamp, that doesn't help you. And also, I'm sick of these SEC fans telling me how great their conference is. Let me tell you something. You've got Florida and Alabama. Everybody else, I don't see much. Georgia, yeah, that was a disappointment. Arkansas is a doormat. South Carolina, I don't hear anything. Kentucky, uh, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, you've got two pretty legitimate squads. The Big 12 South has four teams in the top. That's all I'm saying. Big 12, best conferences this season. So let's get into what the Horns need to do, or really what needs to happen for the Horns to get in. Let me tell you something, guys. As a Texas Longhorn fan, this pains me. But all the Horns fans know this. We are Sooners fans for three weeks now. We And it's not about what we just need in the win. No, we legitimately have to have the Oklahoma Sooners beat Texas Tech and beat Oklahoma State. And it's playing with fire, though, because if they are really impressive in those wins, Oklahoma could jump us and go to the Big 12 championship. But that's, that's our only hope, because if OU drops one game, it's over. It's over for us, because we have to have that three-way tiebreaker. Now that, and so, which would be us with one loss, Tech with one loss, and OU with one loss. But that's speculating that Tech is going to lose to Oklahoma. Listen up, guys. That's not a lock for Oklahoma. Before the season started, you see any game in Norman, <clears throat> chalk that up for a win for OU. They don't lose at home. But the way you look at what, the way Tech is playing right now, 
It's not a gimme game for OU, and they're not going to treat it like that. <clears throat> so, um, hopefully those are sure hands to have our fade in, but those are the same hands that can kick us in the butt. So, that's kind of how it's going to be. It's going to form a triangle. At the end of the year, if, if what I think is going to happen, which is Texas beats Kansas and beats A&M, OU wins the table, though they've got really tough games up ahead, and then Tech loses to OU and beats Baylor. You're going to have a three-way tie. Us, Tech, Oklahoma, each of us have beaten each other. So you've got a triangle there. So now what do you go? What do you look at? Do you look at point differentiation? Do you look where the game was played? Do you look at common opponents? Do you look at teams that they didn't play? How many good teams did you play? And it's it's so difficult. So now I just got to – and one thing that's going to hurt Tech, and this is what I'm going to get at where I think the BCS is wrong, and this will hurt Tech and help OU in Texas, is the fan bases. Let's face it, Tech fans will agree with this. The pollsters don't like Tech because their fan base isn't that big compared to Texas or Oklahoma. And that's not an indictment on Tech. That's just how it is. And with these BCS voters, they're going to look at, okay, all these teams have one loss. Well, which one can make us more money? And I hate that because there should be a playoff. It shouldn't be like figure skating where you have to perform for judges. You should win the games on the field. But what I would say with Texas is this. The big wins of the season for each of us. Tech's big win was against us at home. If OU beats Tech, then their big win will be at home. We beat Oklahoma on a neutral site, so I think that gives the edge to Texas. Though it would have made a lot more of an impact if we won in Norman, it still it wasn't in Austin. It was a neutral site halfway at field, so I think that goes to Texas. Also, we're the only team who played Missouri this year. The rest of them did not play one of the, the good teams in the North. Now, up front, all the North teams are sorry, including Missouri, compared to the South right now. Missouri is playing like straight trash. Uh, you barely beat Baylor by three points. That's terrible. But they're the leading team in the Big 12 North, and we got to play them, and we smoked them. So at the end of the year, maybe that will help us because we all beat each other. We all apparently, if in my prediction, are going to beat Oklahoma State, a good team. Ran the table, but if you look at the northern opponents, which is where things vary, we're the only team of the three that played Missouri. And, you know, and OU, you know, they, we all going to play Kansas, and we'll have to take care of business of Kansas. Uh, so I think that helps Texas. But at the end of the day, this is stupid. This is just, I mean, it really is playing with fire with OU. We have to have OU win, but we can't have them win by too much. We can't let them then be too explosive. So... I don't know what's going to happen, it, but I, I think what helps me, though, I really thought Florida was going to jump us or OU was going to jump us in the BCS poll, which is all that matters. I don't care about the other polls. In the BCS poll, Texas is number three with an all right lead, and Tech and OU have a bye week, which means if we can get a good win against Kansas, we will jump up and hit, we will increase our lead on Oklahoma, which may give us a little bit of leeway when they beat Tech in Oklahoma State, if I'm right. Guys, we could have taken care of it if, if Gideon catches that pass. If we stop Crabtree with no time left, we don't have to worry about this. But we put ourselves in this position. So now we have to look and, and look at the ball projections and see what happens. I guess this, this is, I mean, the BCS, they say that this, these kind of conversations are why the BCS is great. Because you get to have these debates and it's fun to talk about it. Let me tell you something up front. It may be fun to talk about it, but at the end of the year, I want to know that my team was the best team, or if my team didn't get in, I want to know that a better team is in there before above me. And the only reason you can know that is if my team gets knocked out in a playoff. That's my opinion. Please, guys, if you have an opinion, comment. Leave a, a video response. I know there's a lot of Tech and OU fans here on YouTube. Tell me how you think this should play out. Of course you're going to go with your team. I went with my team. Texas Longhorn, it's not that bleak right now. We're number three in the BCS and hopefully we can gain some grain throughout the week. And we have to win, though. We have to win. Hook'em horns, Texas fight, and the BCS sucks.